Hey, it's Webs here, and it's time to charge into the meta with Questline Demon Hunter. You know, a lot of people are focusing on Mr. Smite in Questline Warrior, or maybe even a Rogue Miracle deck, but when I saw all the OTK combos that people have been pulling off with Mr. Smite, I was reminded there was a pirate that gains the attack of your weapon. And what does Demon Hunter have? A weapon that, in theory, can actually scale infinitely. So why not take a deck that already exists in the meta, aka Questline Demon Hunter, and give it an alternate win condition besides just the uh, Ironbound Brutes? Mr. Smite is not the only new card that actually found its home in this deck. Multicaster and Need for Greed also fit in the deck as both provide additional draw power thus making Questline Demon Hunter even stronger than before. Mulligans for this deck are kind of weird. Of course you always want to keep your questline but it's easier to describe the mulligan guide in terms of cards that you don't want to keep in your open hand than it is with cards that you want to keep in your open hand. You don't want to keep any of the combo pieces such as the Blood Cell Raiders or the Mr. Smite because both of these cards will not get discounted by your quest reward. You also don't want to keep Lion's Frenzy because it'll just be a dead card. However, most other cards in this deck are good to keep in your open hand, I would say. It really all depends on the positioning in the hand they are. A card like Glide is really useful to keep in your opening hand if it's the leftmost card after the quest line. However, if it isn't, then you probably shouldn't keep it in your opening hand. But cards like Sigil Runner are always good, and same can be said about Illidari Studies, Sigil, and Spirit Jeller. These cards all allow you to have a turn 2 play. Especially with the sigils, if you coin out a sigil on turn 1, then you can complete your second part of your quest reward with a sigil runner, usually. With that all being said, let's get into the games. Alright, time for game 1 against mage. Just going to mulligan away the I-beam and the multicaster. The I-beam is because probably for this matchup, it's going to be completely dead, so we don't want to actually have it. To no one shock, it's... Westline Mage. I can't blame anyone who likes Mage because Blizzard didn't give them any new support that would actually be playable. At least it's missing one glaring big hole in the deck. A big spell that you'd actually want to play, you know? So this hand is actually not good at all. We have two of our combo pieces which we don't actually want in our hand and then we have three cards that will draw us cards on the left hand most side but we don't have the outcast cards that we want on the outermost left card there instead we have acrobatics drawing into a brute the good news is if we don't play any minions they can't complete their quest line but the bad news is if we don't play anything we can't complete ours Okay, we actually have a play here now. We're going to play the Spirit Chiller and then use Hero Power and then pass the turn. Is this one of the games where I use Glide as an on out cast card? Can't honestly remember if this is the game. I did that in quite a few games and it ended up turning out pretty well. Sure, I minus myself, I had quite a bit of cards, but because of how much draw power I have, it didn't really matter. No, I think this is the game where I actually do use Acrobatics to trigger the quest line. And then the next turn I use Glide, drawing into a Soul Fragment. So here we're going to actually use Acrobatics or the Need for Greed. And then we can use Acrobatics, I guess, if we really need to. So our Glide costs 2, which is pretty good if we use our Illidari. We also kind of hope we draw into some type of, I don't know, non-draw power card here. Just so we can use our Glide in the right post position. Drawing into a Brute. We can draw to here, use the Studies, grab Spectral Sight, and then Glide to reset our hand. Which doesn't really unclog our hand by much. Going to get two free Brutes out though. See, that might look like we're in a pretty bad position because we will only draw two cards at minimum next turn. But we should be able to actually draw into something else that draws us additional cards, especially with the amount of mana we have. They're going to fireball one of the brutes and freeze the other, I guess. So they're actually playing some minions in quest line. Maybe they're actually trying to use some of the new support that Big Mage got. Or they're just a really unoptimized version of quest line mage. Either or, I guess. Drawing into Mr. Smite, which we don't want. And drawing into Double Jump, which we do want. And then Spectral Sight. 
an Anar Blood Cell Raider, and an Ironbound Brute. None of these cards are something that we actually want in our hand. We can still play the Ironbound Brute, which is fine, but that was kind of miserable. There's literally only 8 cards out of 30 that don't actually draw a card out of the deck. Actually make that 10, I think. So there's a 66% chance we draw a draw power card. How hard is that? They completed their quest line. This can start getting kind of sketchy if we don't draw into something good. We draw into the Lion's Frenzy, which is really good. We can actually just play it here without much regret because the chances of them actually playing the Viper that destroys our weapon is very slim. Though they are playing Minions and Questline Mage, so maybe that much higher than I think it's going to be. Evolving Missiles, we honestly don't really care about that because we are getting lower and lower in our deck. Thus, we have all our combo already in hand, and we have a bunch of draw power cards in deck. So as long as we don't spend a shit ton of mana in order to gain a bunch of attack, we should be perfectly fine for our combo. A glide would actually be really cool right about now. Illidori Studies, grabbing the Sigil Runner, grabbing the Acrobatic, Spectral Sight, a Spirit Jailer, which doesn't draw us cards, but it buffs up the weapon even further. Multicaster, we're just going to draw our entire deck right here need for greed uh eh. actually we have combo it's just insane that you can buff up these pirates so much all right game two against hunter man this this does not look like a good opening hand we're just going to mulligan everything besides the i beam away since it's hunter drawing into a sigil runner which is actually pretty good though drawing into the raider this early is really bad drawing into a brute so their questline hunter that's interesting I honestly think it's only a matter of time before Questline Hunter actually becomes relevant in Standard. But the question is, what does it actually need to actually be more relevant? Some type of survivability, probably, to be honest. They're going to use Aim Shot. Spectro Sight, that's good. And then play the Sigil Runner, which will discount the cards that we draw. I probably should have played the Sigil there since it's a zero cost, but oh well. Drawing into the Lion's Frenzy, which is pretty good, just because what are the chances of them actually running the Viper? Especially because it would lower the chances of them getting a beast off of some of their beast generating cards that they actually want. I don't know, maybe that's actually a good idea. If weapon decks become a big thing, just always play three beasts and one of the beasts being the viper that destroys a weapon. That could actually work out in the end. Just going to sit on the weapon for a while. You know, nothing they're doing is really that shocking for a slime hunter. They are playing some tradable, so in theory... Me saying they don't run the Viper might actually be a lie. Drawing into Mr. Smite, don't really want that right now. Multicaster, we don't really want either. Just going to draw three with Need for Greed. Card after my own heart. Going to play the Spirit Jailer so we don't have 10 cards in hand. Going to hit face. We just need to keep one durability on the weapon. That's all we honestly need. So they do have a Royal Librarian. I'm wondering why they're running those types of cards in Westline Hunter. Maybe it's just for a draw power, but I don't think that's the best decision. Drawing to Philosophy, which is actually pretty bad. We're going to turn off something here, but that's fine. Just going to heal a little bit. And then we're going to use our Glide again just to draw cards and finish our quest line because we should be able to survive at least one more turn and if we do we should be able to win the game the nice thing about the quest line reward is because most of our deck is below two cost and within like three mana of that for the most part our deck really has a curve that ends at four instead of six because iron brown brute is always going to be very low if you don't draw it as your very last card this is kind of getting a little bit scary though. They do have a bunch of minions and we only have two mana to actually draw any type of cards. But we can double step, get an eye beam, which is really good. Give them a card, I guess, and then just pass turn. See, they can actually pop off if they finish their quest line. But if we can get to our combo before they can finish their quest line, we win the game. Or at least some type of healing. Explosive Sheep, that's interesting. I guess it acts as a board clear. So I don't know why you would be running Explosive Sheep over Explosive Trap, because that actually triggers your quest line and Sheep doesn't. And right here, they really, really misplay. It could have actually killed me with that aim shot. So no draw power there. 
but we have acrobatics, so it's okay. Sucks that Need for Greed is always a three cost card, but it is what it is. Drawing into the Raiders. See, the Raiders would have been nice if we had already Mr. Smite, but we don't. So, well, there's Mr. Smite, but no mana, so... But we do put ourselves out of lethal range because we do have some taunts that we can put down. And we can just play our pirates because they're really, really, really big. And then hit face. And there should be no way they can actually deal with everything on board. And if they do, we have Mr. Smite anyways along with a multicaster. So we have at least 9 damage in hand. But they're Hunter. What are the chances of them having some type of answer for a board like this? Man, they must be regretting that misplay with the aim shot. I noticed that when I was with this game live, actually. But I was incredibly thankful that they did. But it would have just been one less for the one count. The deck actually is insanely consistent. Alright, now that we're through the games, let's discuss how well the deck did and why I built the deck the way I did. So the deck performed incredibly well. I played 25 games with it. And around the 15th game mark, I changed some cards out for some additional draw power and some type of answer for early game minions. So since a lot more decks that are minion based started to show up, this card being I-Beam. I-Beam allowed you to have an easy way to deal with those minions. And it also wasn't always a dead card compared to some of the other cards that I had included in the deck, such as the Fog Sail Pirate that does two damage if you have a weapon equipped. Because you're only one running one weapon, that card was usually offline, so I'd rather have the I beams in the deck instead. I also cut one philosophy and the legendary that ignores taunt in order to include the acrobatics in the deck. This allowed you to more easily complete your quest line steps and thus allowed you to complete your combo even quicker. Oh, and I forgot to mention throughout those 25 games, the deck had a 60% win rate, which was insane, especially for a deck that no one's really talking about since most people are warrior which are the obvious homes for the card however i had a genius idea to use lion's frenzy to buff up the blood cell admirals even higher than either of those other two classes could do thus allowing you to have a easier combo than either of them probably do sure mr smite is probably best at home in questline warrior just because you're running a bunch of pirates anyways however i do think this is probably the better home than the rogue deck but i don't know if this will actually catch on because who would think of trying pirate in demon hunter you know and you can still see some of the traditional win condition of questline demon hunter such as the ironbound brutes and the one philosophy these were still included in the deck just because you could use these as alternate win conditions or as a way to actually survive for an additional turn with a card like glide you could sometimes make the iron brown brutes be online like turn four or five thus allowing you to survive against a heavy mini matchup and if you drew into your philosophy then you could duplicate it but i didn't want to rely on this win condition too much and i figured that having additional cards in the deck to draw more to complete your quest line quicker would be better than including a second copy of this because there were some games early on where I would brick between all the cards that I had included in the deck that didn't draw me a card such as the philosophies or the fog sale which I ended up cutting. I found this was like the perfect ratio when it came to non-draw power compared to draw power cards. Sure you're not going to have a lot of ways to deal with a bunch of minions but you do have at least a few ways to deal with them to stall out while you try to complete your quest line. Usually you can actually complete the combo by turn seven or eight just because of the amount of mana discounts that you have the blood cell raiders are going to be zero cost once you complete your quest line and mr smite's one before cost speaking of glide glide is probably the most awkward card in the deck to actually use but given its nature you want to still run the card in the deck just because of the fact that if you're behind on card advantage this is going to be insane you sometimes can just ruin your opponent's day by playing this when it's outcasted but there are also other times where it'll just instantly complete your quest line step even if it isn't outcasted and if you can survive an additional turn without worrying about the fact that you might be behind on card advantage your entire deck's draw power there's no reason to not sometimes use this card when it doesn't have its outcast effect and that decision alone actually helped me win quite a few games so i'm looking forward to the other classes that can really abuse mr smite i might look into some other 
boss besides the more stereotypical two i might not i think i'm going to do Sherlock shaman probably for the next video since it'll just give some variety but if you enjoyed the video please leave a like comment and subscribe and until next time bye bye